Hey, this is Henny, and uh, today we're just going to talk quickly through um, the anatomy of the shoulder um, and how understanding the anatomy and, and um, what's going on at the shoulder joint can help prevent injuries, recover from injuries, um, and generally just help your, your shoulder health overall. So um, let's get right, right into it. So just quickly um, looking at the shoulder here, you can see the first most important thing is that you can see that the shoulder joint, the bones there, are kind of just held together, not by much, right? They're just kind of touching each other. There's not much um, much of a joint in there, you know? It's just kind of the bone is... Oh, the bone is just kind of... Get, oh, that's not good. The bone is just kind of hanging out against... Leaning against the other bone, right? So if we just have a quick comparison to the hip here... You can see a big difference here, right? So there's a lot more bone, um, bone in bone around the joint. So it's much harder to to get have injuries with this joint. Um, you know, it's less less common just because the the um, the bone is going to stay in its socket and do its job much easier because it's being being held in place by bones. But in the shoulder, it's a bit harder, and that's why we have uh, we see a lot more injuries in the shoulder, right? So just for you to understand and visualize what's going on um, this is called the scapula right also known as the shoulder blade most people understand that um, and it's basically responsible for stabilizing um, the shoulder so its job is to keep um, the the arm here the humerus in its in its place throughout you know your daily activity so scapula humerus they're probably the two most important um, bones here. Uh, up here we've got the clavicle, but um, it's not going to play that much of a role. It's more just a stabilizer and kind of anchoring everything in. Um, so yeah, I think we'll keep our focus on the, the scapula here, the shoulder blade, and the humerus there. So the most important thing is to understand how, um, how this shoulder joint is held together. So um, I'll just add some muscles here just to show you, right? So... These are the keys, right? So you can kind of see already uh, three muscles here on the shoulder blade that have just appeared. Um, and you can see where they're going. They're connected right onto the head of the humerus. And you can imagine what they're doing, right? So if I remove them, again, you see the bone, um, this bone here, is just just held in place, just touching the, the scapula. And as soon as we add the muscle, you can see that that's um, these three muscles here on the, on the scapula, on the shoulder blade, that's their job, is to pull that um, humerus, keep it in against the, um, the scapula there the whole time whenever you're doing something with your arms, all right? So these three muscles are, are like, there's four of them actually, but they're, they're part of a group called the rotator cuff. And I'm sure you've heard them before. And most shoulder injuries come back to these four muscles. So uh, an injury or damage into one of these four um, muscles usually will... Um, you know, that's the most common thing with shoulders, you know, so um, you can get things like dislocations, which, you know, it's much more, it's a bit more serious, but the most common injuries are kind of the wear and tear type of injuries um, and, you know, frozen shoulder where, where you can't lift the shoulder up um, and get stuck. And that's usually responsible, um, it's caused by these three muscles, these four right to the cuff muscles, which I'll get to the fourth one in a second, uh, being injured or having some, some problem, right? So the other one here, which I'm going to show you is on the inside. Again, it's doing exactly the same thing as the one, the three on the back here, but it's on the inside holding from the front, right? So I'll just take you through each of these and just so you know the name and um, if you do have a, an injury in your shoulder, um, you probably can relate what, you know, if you've had a scan or something with, with what you're feeling and the location of it, right? So I'll start with the most common one, which is up here. It's called supraspinatus. All right, and you can see, you can imagine what its job is. It's right at the top, and it's really responsible for the last, uh, for anything above shoulder height. So as you lift your arm above the level of the shoulder, that muscle is here pulling on your, um, on your humerus and just keeping it connected so that it doesn't go flying off um, towards the roof, you know? So it's just keeping that all tight in the joint in there. So that's um, supraspinatus, right? You can see the name um, here. And again, this is probably the most commonly injured one. Uh, most of the problems happen right at the at the tendon up here. So you might get um, people might get tears and stuff um, 
near the bone up here and that's just the, the, the place that takes the most stress so if this muscle is not weak or you do something too much too heavy if you try to lift something too heavy or hold you know something above your head for a long time this muscle can only last for for so long so you can get some damage and that causes a lot of problems later on um, this is infraspinatus so you can see these names these names come from Latin so uh, this um, just the, the little bony bit just above this muscle is called the spine of the scapula so the one above it's called supraspinatus so above the spine of the scapula and this one's called infraspinatus which is below um, the line of the scapula but it doesn't really matter about the name so again this one's not as commonly injured um, it's a bit bigger of a muscle it doesn't uh, it's more of just a stabilizer so it's not moving things too much by itself um, so that's infraspinatus but very rarely injured um, this is called teres minor much smaller muscle again not not very commonly injured i've seen it a couple of times but um, not that common again it's just kind of working to keep that um, the humerus in, in place all right and sub this is called subscapularis which is on the reverse side of the scapula on the underside and um, again very big muscle and this one is a bit of a strange one sometimes we see um, quite like some random um, damage in this muscle and um, usually it's as a result of um, you know something where you're pushing really heavy um, like like something like that where you're where you're pushing with your shoulder up to forwards um, really something really heavy or if you you know um, reach behind the, your passenger seat in, in your car and you're you know you reach back and it's a, you're a full stretch that's also putting pressure on that muscle so if you if something happens like that if you you know if you fall someone falls off a ladder and you catch them with one arm you can cause a lot of damage into this muscle um, as well if you suddenly jerk your arm if your arm is suddenly jerked back all right the one other thing that i just want to mention quickly so i'll just show you this vision as well so these are the rotator cuffs right you can see them um they're holding the, the, sh the joint together, just like I showed you in the hip where the bone is doing that. Right now, it's just the shoulder, it's just these muscles doing that. And um, the one other important thing, I hope I've got it on here, um, which is this, this is called the bursa. So you can see um, this one, oh, oops, this bursa here, subdeltoid, and then this one, subacromial. Right, so the bursa is just like a fat pad, it's just a cushion. So the idea is that as, as, this, um, as the arm goes up, um, the one that's highlighted here um, is protecting the, the muscle from touching the, the bone above it. So don't, we don't want the muscle and the bone to scrape together too much. So if the muscle underneath it is injured or overused or, you know, um, or damaged, then that muscle below, so supraspinatus here, is, gets inflamed, which means that there's a bit more blood flow trying to heal, heal the muscle. So the, mus the muscle gets inflamed and it pushes that, um, that bursa up against the, um, the bone up here. So it pushes this up against the bone and um, that, that can cause a lot of problems for people. So if you do have inflammation and then the bursa is constantly hitting that bone, it also gets inflamed, it's getting damaged. So that's when you get something called frozen shoulder. So as you lift up, people can't actually lift any more than that. Often they're just stuck. Um, and that's what's happening is that there's so much inflammation in there in both the muscle and the bursa here that they just it's just stuck there's no room um, to get through so um, that's a very common problem and and you know lots of scans and um will show up as bursitis uh, but it's still coming from the same thing of, of rotator cuff um, damage underneath that um and then i might just show you as well um that this is kind of what happens in here so you've got all these nerves trying to pass through the joint to get down into the arm and the fingers to, to communicate here. So you can see a big bunch of them um, coming down here, down in the arm. So if you do have some inflammation um, where these muscles are, are getting overused and a bit, um, they're swelling up a little bit, they're taking up more space. So there's more likely, um, they're more likely to, to touch some of these nerves and that can cause some numbness and tingling in the fingers. So that's something that we really want to avoid and keep the shoulder the muscles in the shoulder are super strong and super super active. Um, so I keep saying one more thing, but I do have one more thing to show. So rotator cuff is stabilizers, right? They're the most commonly injured, but you've got all these big muscles as well on top. So these muscles actually can take a lot more um, load, and they're the, they're the real movers. So if you're lifting, you know, something 
heavy, these muscles are actually responsible for doing, for doing the, the lifting part, and then the ones on the inside are stabilizing. So they're just keeping the shoulder in place, and these ones are the ones moving them. So there is a big, we, need, we really need them both to be connected with each other. We need your brain to understand when it needs to use the rotator cuff, when it needs to keep that stability on, on which is pretty much always, and then when it needs to use these bigger muscles. So um, the, another common thing with the shoulders is that people, this is called the trapezius muscle. So the upper fibers, so up here, um, these tend to become overactive. So we actually want our brain to use these ones down here a bit more. Um, and that's called scapular stability. Um, and, and yeah, like to, to keep to keep the shoulder blade back and down. That's what that's what um, is is what we want. So um, these muscles also, if if the scapula is not strong enough, your muscles underneath these are not strong enough. These ones to keep the scapula in the right position, then these ones start to get overactive, and that can cause a lot of other problems with neck pain and things like that. So it is a whole network. I think I, I really focus on the on the rotator cuff because that's the one they're the ones that are the most commonly injured and they're the ones that you can really make a big difference on because they're such small weak muscles that you know even just doing a few exercises can really get a lot of improvement in them um and and then you can you know kind of prevent injury and reduce the inflammation and give yourself a lot a lot more freedom so um, that's it for the shoulder um thank you for watching um and all the best